this example, I'm going to look at string expressions. Strings could be one character, like the letter X or question mark. Strings can also be more than one character, like NO for NO or CAT for CAT. Strings can be compared. I'll go to operators. Use the equals. I'll type in NO, lowercase NO, and I'll type in capital NO, NO. I click on it. I see that it's true. Uppercase and lowercase match. The case can also be mixed. If I change capital N O to capital N lowercase O, click on the expression, it's true also. Upper and lowercase letters match. Try comparing a couple strings with just one letter in them. Change the first one to B, second one to C. Is it equal? False. I'll right click on the comparison, change it to a less than sign. Is B less than C? I'll click on it. True. B is less than C. When comparing letters and strings, Scratch uses alphabetical ordering. Try some longer strings. Cat and cat. Try equal. It's cat equal cat. True. Instead of cat, I'll use car. Is car equal cat? False. Right click. Is car less than cat? The letter R is before the letter T, so this should be true. And is. Now I'll try all of that in a little program. I'll go to Control. Get an if else and another one. I'll need another expression. I'll copy it. Since I have a couple copies of these words, I'm going to make a couple variables and use those instead. Go to data, make a variable. String one, okay. Make another variable. String two, okay. They're global, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll focus on making strings. I'm going to compare the strings, string 1 and string 2. I'll drop them into the comparisons. Duplicate, duplicate. If string 1 is less than string 2, I will say less than. Copy. I'll right click, greater than. If string 1 is greater than string 2, I'll change less to greater than. Copy. If string 1 is not less than string 2 and it's not greater than string 2, it must be equal to string 2. So I'll say equals. Program's almost ready to run. I'll go to events, green flag. And then I'll need to initialize string 1 and string 2. Go to data. Get a couple sets. Change that to string 1, string 2. Try car and cat. Run the program. String 1 is car, string 2 is cat, and the cat said less than. I'll change car to cat run again. Cat equals cat. Good. Now I'll change string 1 to cats and run it. Cats is greater than cat. And it would be in alphabetical order. I can try a couple more strings now. Instead of cats, I'll use cat1. And I'll compare that with cat2. Green flag. Cat1 is less than cat2. Not surprising. C, A, T are the same. The character 1 is before character 2. I'll change the 2 to an S. I'll run that. Cat1 is less than cats. The digit characters 
are sorted before the letter characters are. It can be a little strange, but Scratch also handles strings with special characters in them. If string 2 is cat, and string 1 is ca, question mark, I run that, ca question mark, is alphabetically sorted before C-A-T cat. If I change question mark to a curly brace and run, C-A curly brace is greater than C-A-T. Some special characters are before the letters. Some special characters are after the letters. If you need to know how special characters are sorted, Look online for the ASCII table that shows the order of all supported characters and more. Next for strings, I'll look at the length of and letter number of strings. Go to Operators, and I'll get Letter of, Length of. While I'm here, I'll get Join. Length of gives a count of how many characters are in the string. Length of the string world is 5, W-O-R-L-D five letters. Letter one of the string world is W. The last letter, letter five, is letter D. I can use length and letter on my string variables. I'll copy string two into both of the expressions. Length of string two. String two is cat, three letters. So when I click on it, I'll get the number three. If I click on this, letter 5 of string 2 doesn't exist, so Scratch will return an empty answer. I'll click on it, and I get an empty answer. If I have numbers 1, 2, or 3, I'll see some of the letters. I'll click on the 5, change it to a 1, run it. Letter C is the first letter of cat in string 2. Letter 2 will be the A, and letter 3 will be the T. And finally, the join command. Join combines the two strings to make a new string. When I click on this, I'll see hello world with a space in between. The space is there because hello has a space at the end of the word. Let me put string one and string two into join. Duplicate string one, duplicate string two, and I want to set string one and string two. I'll get rid of this and I'll use the initialization. Let me put the string into a say command. Looks, say. I'll change string one and string two. Cat, sprite, with no spaces. When I run it, I get cat sprite together with no spaces. I go to the end of cat, add a space. Now when I run it, I have cat sprite separated by a space, C-A-T space and sprite. I can use several joins together when I need to in order to make longer statements. I'll get these out of the way. Go back to operators. Get another join. Now I'd like to say the cat sprite is waiting. I'm going to need to add the in front and is waiting on the end that on the end, change hello to the space, cat space, sprite. I want to add is waiting on the end. I'll get another join. Put the first join at the beginning. I'll change world to space is waiting period. I'll drop it into the say and I'll run it. Click on the green flag. The cat sprite is waiting. I'm finished with this example and this challenge now. I want to encourage you to use the examples and get experience using string expressions. Try playing with the different operators you've just seen. Try using joins to make some new statements. And if you want a different challenge, try writing a loop that will display all the letters in a string variable. Or if you want to try something even more challenging, Write a loop that will leave string 2 having the value of string 1, but in reverse order.
So if string 1 is cat, C-A-T, string 2 should end up being T-A-C. Have fun with the challenge.